are going into the unknown. What's on the other side may know you're coming. In a world made famous by Dirty Harry and his notorious 44 Magnum, big bore revolvers have developed their own culture and their own demands. Gun Digest author Max Prasik is a big bore revolver expert who loves nothing more than taking these hand cannons out of their case and harnessing the power of the big steel. These guns can be a challenge. Big guns have big recoil, and they have the potential to humble you in a hurry. But if you listen to those who know these guns, whether you're punishing targets or using them for hunting, shooting big bore revolvers produces a rush unmatched by any other firearm. You know, there are a lot of misconceptions about big bore revolvers. My favorite one is muzzle energy being a determinant of lethality. I don't believe it. I think I've proven it time and time again, as of many other handgun hunters. And I want to look at each and every one of these guns' attributes and see how they fit your particular style of hunting or what it is you're actually planning on doing with that particular firearm. So let's go have some fun. This is the 44 Magnum. This one actually started life out as a 44 Magnum, but being the hot rodder that I am, can't leave any well enough alone. So I sent this one over to JRH Advanced Gunsmithing to customize, and it remains a 44 Mag, but it's quite a bit tweaked over, over what was a stock stock revolver. The most obvious thing is this uh, custom set of grips on it, which were made to fit my hand actually, which mitigates, mitigates a lot of the pain that people feel when they shoot these guns. If the grips are wrong, everything's wrong. Now, a revolver that generates quite a bit of recoil will benefit from the Bisley grip frame as Ruger's interpretation of the Bisley grip frame. It's one of my favorites. People love them or hate them, but they are undeniably great when recoil goes up. 44 Magnum, does offer some recoil, particularly if you load it heavier than, than what is considered the norm, meaning 240 grain loads. There's the 44 mag right there, that's 240 grain load. This is a perfect revolver for the neophyte or somebody who just is a little bit more recoil sensitive. It's not that it's a maiden's caress, it does kick when loaded heavily, but this is a revolver that can do it all, will do it all. This is one of my favorites. It's a Ruger Bisley, but this is a distributor exclusive by Tallow. I got this one from Lipsy's. Uh, it's got a five and a half inch barrel. It's 45 Colt, as I mentioned before, six shot. Bisley grip, and this one has color case hardening by Doug Turnbull. It's beautiful, and it's quite the shooter. Some production revolvers are a little rough out of the box. This one, not rough at all. This thing has a pretty good trigger out of the box. It's again the Bisley grip frame, which I really like with recoil going up. And I don't shoot it with, with milk toast loads. I shoot it with, with proper 45 Colts loads, as I, as I like to call them, the Ruger only type loads that are in the 30,000 PSI load range. This puts this caliber in a different realm entirely. It's a big game caliber and it's very effective, and it is a step up from the 44 mag. While the recoil is stout, it's definitely manageable. If you can handle the 44 mag loaded to, loaded to its limits, you can definitely handle 45 Colt. Coming up next, moving up the 454 Kasul. This is Modern Shooter. Modern Shooter is brought to you by Agula Ammunition. Feed your firearm. 
by H&H &H Precision Rifles, engineering precision rifles and components for the world's most demanding shooters. Six Hour Electro Optics. See the difference by Securit, intelligent firearm storage. By Gun Digest, we know guns, so you know guns. By Turnbull Restoration, specializing in the accurate restoration of historical metal finishes on period firearms. And by Benchmark Barrels, world-class accuracy made in the USA. Being the glutton for punishment that I am, I was immediately drawn to the 454 Casul when I'd read about them and the sizable recoil and the, the big game that's fallen to this particular cartridge, so I absolutely had to have one. Why? Because they kick hard. Does that make any sense? I guess in my twisted paradigm it does. I also brought along another 454 Casul, but this one's by Magnum Research. It's a BFR. These are a little bit bigger, a little beefier than all of the other single action offerings out there but they're built like tanks. And I gotta say, out of the box, these things are really accurate. They've got a match grade barrel. This is their new Bisley grip frame. Well, it looks kind of strange, like a banana, but this is a great, great grip frame, great angle for controlling recoil, and it really does control recoil well. You see, I've equipped this one with a red dot type sight. These things are brutal. They can handle they can handle more recoil than I care to throw at them. That's why I put these things on a lot of these revolvers because they're really good. They're really great in low light. Maybe not traditional, but neither is stainless steel. Let's go shoot this one. One thing you'll note, I use a lot of grip tension when I shoot these particular revolvers. A lot of people like to let them ride, let them fly. I don't like to do that. If I use a little more grip tension, my point of impact doesn't change much when I'm shooting off the bench when I'm, when I'm trying to sight in or test different loads to when I'm shooting offhand. Same grip tension, I tend to hit in the same place. One more thing about my grip. Earlier we talked about the grip tension that I use when I'm holding my revolvers and shooting them. I want to talk about something equally important, and that's my support hand. Well, most folks use it just for that, support. I do something extra, a little unorthodox, and I've caught some flack from some folks who don't seem to understand what I'm doing. But I not only support the weight of the gun here with my left hand, I also place my left thumb behind my right thumb and this locks in the grip. What happens is the gun, even in full recoil, won't break my grip and fly up and hit me in the head. Not only does my left hand support the weight of the revolver, it helps me control it in recoil, making me, allowing for much faster follow-up shots, which is something you should be concerned with if you're a hunter. The criticism is rooted in the practice of shooting semi-automatic pistols. Slide goes back, it can hit your thumb back here, which it would. But this is a revolver, I don't have to worry about that. I know people say, well, it's habit forming. Yeah, it is habit forming, but when I pick this up, I don't feel like, I don't make the mistake in, in, uh, that in, in misidentifying it as a 1911 or a Glock. It's a revolver, I know what I need to do. Thumb goes behind it, helps me control it. If you're shooting a semi-auto, yeah, it'll clock you in the thumb. You don't want to do that, but I'm not shooting semi-autos. Coming up next, the skill it takes to shoot a 50 caliber. This is Modern Shooter. Now let's get into my favorite category, the half inch. This is a 50 caliber handgun. This is a BFR and 500 JRH. This is a cartridge that is essentially a cut down 500 Smith & Wesson from 1.6 inch case to 1.4 inch case, but with this little bit smaller rim. It is very terminally effective. This one has a five and a half inch barrel. Again, it's a match grade barrel um, with a Bisley grip frame, Magnum Research's interpretation of Bisley grip frame, and it is best thing that they've ever done as far as I'm concerned. This handles recoil really well and allows for really quick follow-up shots. And I've equipped this one with an optic red dot type sight. Let's talk recoil for a moment. 
this is my bench setup. This is what I test rounds for diff different loads off of. This is where I test for accuracy. This is where I sight in. This is not where you want to spend your time shooting these. If you, if you do, you're just going to, you're going to beat yourself up and you're running a risk of actually developing a flinch from, from the abuse that you're going to heap on yourself on this thing. But it's a good way just to test your, your zero, basically, and to test different loads. But when you're done with that, I recommend not even getting anywhere near a bench. Shoot offhand, shoot in your, in your hunting positions, your shooting positions, field positions. So that's, that's what I kind of wanted to touch upon here. And when I do this, I always use my, my Pro Aim gloves. I discovered these things uh, a number of years ago, and, and, and they, they, just, they just mitigate the damage your hands do. And I do this, I never fail to use them because you only have two of these, and they're supposed to last you a lifetime. Let's protect them when you can. And thus far, I have no problems with them, knock on wood. We've been shooting steel all day. Let's shoot something that's a little more reactive. There's a soda bottle down there. Let's see if I can hit it. Wow, that was impressive. It was a cheap bottle of generic soda. What does that amount to? Okay, not much. It's impressive to look at. But this is, the, this is the gun and the caliber that I used on Cape Buffalo last May. It's very effective. Don't let, the, don't let the fireworks fool you into thinking it's anything less. Let's talk handgun hunting. Uh, my indications I have are that it's gaining in popularity. The one item we have working against us is the fact that it's hard. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, when you build up uh, a level of competence with some of these heavier recoiling revolvers and you set it down for six months, it's like learning all over again. So it's hard. It's harder to hit a target with a short barrel iron sights, or even, even if you put a scope on a revolver, it's harder on a revolver. There's a long eye relief on a scope. It's just a, it's something that you're not controlling with your whole body like a rifle when you can, when you can put, the, put the stock into your, into your shoulder. So it's difficult. So you have to get closer, typically, but that's what I love about it. It's the challenge. It's hard. It is hard. Not everyone can do it. And so it's something that I'm, I'm a little, it's a point of pride for me. It's the challenge that really, really attracts me to handgun hunting. Now, on that note, this is a caliber that, in my humble opinion, is one of the greatest things out there for anybody that wants to get into this. It's got really big game capability, yet it doesn't beat the shooter up like, like the 454 does or the 50 calibers. It's the 480 Ruger. It's essentially a shortened 475 line ball, but it's more than that. It is something that even when you load it to spec, it is snappy, it does recoil, but it's not that abusive. It's really not that abusive. And when you load it correctly with the right bullets, the right loads, and you do your part, this thing is capable of all kinds of damage. So the 480 Ruger is a great choice. It'll take big game, and I'm not talking whitetail now, I'm talking really big game, and it won't beat the bejesus out of you. Can I say bejesus? Okay, anyhow. You can get the 480 Ruger and a couple platforms from Ruger itself. They have a Super Red Hawk and they have this Bisley. Bisley comes in two different barrel lengths. This is the shorter of the two, the other one has a six and a half inch barrel. But the Super Red Hawk with a seven and a half inch barrel and 480 Ruger is a dream come true as far as I'm concerned. For, for, a, for a handgun hunting uh, revolver, it's a great, great platform. Coming up next, pro shooter John Nagel and four targets in less than two seconds. You're watching Modern Shooter. Modern Shooter is brought to you by Agula Ammunition. Feed your firearm. By H&H &H Precision Rifles. Engineering precision rifles and components for the world's most demanding shooters. Six Hour Electro Optics. See the difference. By Securit. Intelligent firearm storage. By Gun Digest. We know guns, so you know guns. By Turnbull Restoration. Specializing in the accurate restoration of historical metal finishes on period firearms. And by Benchmark Barrels. World-class accuracy made in the USA. 
So I can't do this all by myself. I have my lovely assistant, Rachel Nagel, my wife, who uh, supports me in all of my shooting uh, career and my endeavors. She's gonna run the timer for me. This is a shot timer, and this is a very important piece of gear for the speed shooter. Everything that is going on in a stage is recorded by this timer, and you can break down all of your movements. You want to always be looking at the target. It's much like a shotgun shot in that you never take your eye off the target. That's the very uh, first thing that I want my students to learn is never take your eye off the target. Stand by. There we go. That was a much better. That's, that's under two seconds. That's a 191. Four targets in less than two seconds, 1.91. Now, it, it seems pretty obvious that, right, he, he's getting the muscle memory down. And, and just as importantly, and, and back me up on this, John, if it's true, it's the sight picture, right? I mean, you're feeling. Yeah, this is a pretty, it, tight, a, pretty tight stage as far as that, that last shot's pretty small and it's got some distance to it. So this is a, this is a challenging stage. It's not the most challenging that we'll see, but it, it's it's fairly challenging stage. But still, four quick shots like that in less than two seconds, that is extremely impressive. You've seen how I do it. You set the bar yeah. pretty high. Well, I think you can do it. We're gonna put the gun in your hands and see how you do as a, as a new shooter with a little bit of instruction. All right, I'm ready. Now, when you start the stage, you don't ever wanna break your cheek weld. That's very important. Cheek weld is, is paramount in this game. You never wanna break that. Would you say that 90% of your movement is coming from the hips? I would say that 90% of my movement is coming with, from the hip with a rifle, absolutely. Okay. So at the beep, I mean, my eyes, while I'm waiting for that beep to go, my gun is on the start position, my eyes are on that first target. Absolutely. As soon as the red dot breaks the plane of the target, you press the trigger and break the shot. I am gonna ask you one more question here as I load up. Sure. So right out of the gate, it makes sense, keep my eyes on that first target, but that is a very big plate. That's and one thing I've plate. learned from hunting, from shooting anything, you pick a spot. With hunting, you pick a hair. When you bring that red dot to meet your eyes, where on that target are you looking? Are you looking right on the left edge of I'm that target? I'm looking at the left edge of the target. So you're waiting, for, you're looking at that specific spot, that right. plane that the red dot has to cross when you're gonna break that first that, shot. That, I have a bad habit of actually hitting the left edge in competition and having to call for an RO to inspect the target. I guess that means you're pretty darn quick then, doesn't it? Well, that, that means that I'm not wasting any movement. And we're talking hundreds. Thousands of a second. Yeah. All right. Let's see where this goes. Shooter ready. Stand by. 0.71. Whew. Okay. And I broke it way late. Stand by. A little early. A little early. 0.4. Okay. Doing a 0.4. Stand by. 0.49. Okay. Time's coming down. And I'm still, that hit the right edge of the target, didn't it? So I could break just it a, earlier. Just a tenth of a second faster. Are you ready? Ready. Stand by. There we go. Left edge of the target, 0.37, with a brand new shooter. Hey, you know what they say, every once in a while, a blind hawk finds a nut. Right, so now we're going to put it all together. Expected. We're going to put it the whole stage together now. Yeah. And what you're going to see is, and this happens to me also, is that your first shot's going to slow down because you're thinking about the entire stage. It's like, and there's a big, bigger program running in your mind. It's like chess. I'm doing this move here, but I'm already thinking about what's going to happen right, so two, three moves, two, three targets you'll, later. You'll probably see your, your first shot decrease by three tenths of a second. Okay, so if we're going to run the full stage, that was what, four or five shots. I'm going to change out as long as I have an option to use 11. Right. On this, first, well. on this first stage, I'm going to have them in there. Okay. Stand by. Three point five eight seconds. I couldn't. Hit, did I hit the first shot? I think I missed the first shot. You missed the first two shots and you and hit, then it on hit the, the third. third. All right, I couldn't hear that one. I want to shot make sure. seven times. So you're faster when you don't miss. I understand that. That's like shoot the wiggle out of them. I'm gonna have to get that out of my head. So what was the time? Three point five eight seconds. Three point five, five eight one, seconds. First shot. I got a feeling I can do a lot better. What then the first shot was? 5-1. Five, 5-1. One. Five, one. You're right. I mean, you called it. It went from 0.39 to 0.51. Give me some suggestions for moving between the targets, like from the first to the second, because that felt really clunky to me. Okay, so the, I have a technique that I like to use. It's called cut and ratchet. Okay. And what that means is you cut your eye to the target and you ratchet the gun over. Your gun's going to naturally come to your eye, just like your first shot did. 
So if you'll cut your eye quickly, the eye is the fastest muscle in the body. Mm -hmm. So we use that to our advantage to get our eye on target and the gun's gonna naturally come right to where we're looking at. So it's the exact same, same exact technique same that we started Exact same thing, you're gonna with, break right? the shot on the, now that you're moving towards the left, you're gonna break the shot on the yeah. right edge now. It's exactly the way I started with my eyes on that target. Shot Correct. breaks, eyes are moving, guns catching up. Correct. Okay. All right, John, I'm gonna run it one more time regardless of how it goes and I'm just gonna slow down a little bit. Okay. Okay, I just, I feel like that I'm gonna start getting some bad habits by, I'm just gonna slow down, do it right, and see if we can hit that fourth target the first time around. And we have a saying in this sport, go back to the fundamental, slow down, go faster. I like that, let's see if it works. Stand by. Perfect. Now then we have a 268. A nice, so five minutes. And we've knocked a second and a half over your, off of your overall time. And I did exactly what you suggested. Just slowed down, forgot about that darn timer, and just worked on the fundamentals. And that ratcheting, I mean, I took overall, maybe it was two tenths of a second to kind of focus on that ratcheting technique you were talking about. Eyes red dot, eyes red dot, following it through. That was the key for me. Outstanding. I'm glad we could help you out today, and we want to see you back out on the range more. Thank you. No matter what you do, stick to those fundamentals. Be sure to check out Modern Shooter online and on Facebook.